Well, oh. we start with stress, yeah? Okay. Where do you want to take it? Fuck, I gotta get a Fiji water. Jason, need some Fiji water over here, bud. <laughs> um, yeah, so stress, man. Stress can come in lots of different forms. Where does stress come from, do you think? Is it a mental thing, physical thing? combo what the fuck does stress mean to you i mean if you had asked me this question probably a year ago i would have told you something differently than now so there there's two parts to it i think there's the trauma that's you know that's more like anxiety that kind of stuff and i th i do i do believe that it exists uh just because i went through it and i i, I believe that i'm a, a very like mentally healthy person and very mentally positive person but I do believe it does exist. And and I do believe that these are things that we have to deal with. But at the same time, I think stress and anxiety can also come from working on things that you are not that that do not fulfill you, that do not um inspire you in a way. Uh um, way. Because I've seen people, we both have seen people come and go through our company that um that get burnt out and that get stressed out about uh working. But I don't really think it's because of the the long hours or because of this thing or that thing. I think they're just not fulfilled in their work. Mm. Yeah, man. I mean, for me, I know uh, the most stressed I was in my early days after leaving college in the States and graduating, I was working in a bank. And I was super fucking stressed, man. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd just be immediately thinking about paperwork and bullshit that I hated doing. And I knew I had like eight hours of it ahead of me. I was completely unfulfilled. I was not happy with what I was doing. And I also had this feeling that like life was passing me by because I was doing stuff that I wasn't enjoying. And I knew I had more of it coming today and more of it coming tomorrow and more of it coming the next day. And that stressed me out. The feeling of I'm doing this bullshit again for this fucking bank who doesn't care about people. That stressed me out. So what it sounds like, it's because you were living in the future, right? And and that's the thing that I think a lot of people do is like normally, naturally, we live in our heads and usually we're either living in the past or the future, right? And so we're either dwelling on our past or we're living in the future and stressing about what if this and what if that and what if this doesn't work out or what if I start this thing and I it's a scam? What if I enroll in BJK University and it turns out to be nothing on the other end and now I've wasted five grand? Well, it's like, it's because you're living in the future. But I think if more people spend time living in today and the current present and, and, and like focusing on what they're doing and how to and find joy in what they're doing, I do believe that's where you could actually overcome a lot of stress. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's very true. Living in the moment, uh, you can find a lot of gratitude in the moment. I think I think if you're stressing about the future, um, you're a lot of times building stories that actually won't come true. Right? Like 99% of the shit you think of doesn't come true. So if you're thinking in the future and you start stressing about those things that should happen to you, it's going to happen. Oh my God, I'm so fucking stressed about it. And then the shit doesn't actually happen. What a waste of time that was. Plus you missed the moment you were... You, you were living in and you could have enjoyed, right? Now, the bad part about this is the complete mind fuck of this is that if you look back on your life and you think about how many times you look forward to things and you were stressing, how many things have you missed in the moment, right? I can give you a great example of this. One of the guys who works at our company, he said to me the other day, yeah, I remember when I was having my baby, I was super stressed about bills and work and things that were happening in my life. And I completely missed the journey of having the child. And it's one of the biggest regrets I've ever had in my life. He said that just two days ago. And so he's looking back on that and it's bringing him stress now. It's like a full circle of stress. So living in the moment is, is the goal. You want to be planning for the future, of course, but you can't be dwelling in it, right? You can be dwelling in the past and just trying to reach for this future that might not even be there. That'll stress you the fuck out. Yeah, I remember I saw a video by Jeff Bezos um, a while back who was talking about, uh, you know, about his journey in starting an entrepreneur, you know, starting a business and stuff like that. And because, the, you know, people that uh, that don't know the story of Jeff, but he, um, 
he actually had a like a, a six figure paying job in the early nineties. You know, so this guy's even if he's making a hundred grand, thirty years ago, like that's a lot of money, you know. Mm. And he quit that, moved across country, and started Amazon. And I remember in that video he was talking about how like people would tell him like, dude. People that go and take those kinds of risks are people that usually don't have a whole lot going on for them. But you've got a great job. You know, you have a, a college degree. You have all this. Like, you have a great career. Why are you doing this? And he said, you know, if I wake up when I'm 80 and look back, and if I didn't start Amazon, I will probably have regrets. But if I started Amazon and it completely flopped, then I won't have regrets. It's like, well, whatever. I found this job. I can find another job. And I think this is where a lot of people also live too much in the future of what if I start this thing and it doesn't work? Like how many how many people uh, have we gotten on the phone or try to apply or enroll in BJK University that didn't do that? And, you know, six months later, they're still waiting on the sidelines, looking around, looking at all of the success stories, looking at everyone and just simply missing out on it because they're worried. What if I start this and it doesn't work, you know? Um, and I think this where it comes down to um, the whole notion of, like, I need to have the entrepreneurial journey. I need to have, like, kind of, I need to know, I, I need to have the the know-how. I need to have the experience. I need to have the knowledge. I need to have, like, an edge or something like that for me to start a business. Mm. Yeah. It's like people were born fucking entrepreneurs and and you weren't. Right, like everybody else was born an entrepreneur, but you weren't. No, In reality check. Like nobody was, right? And to your point about, um, you know, a lot of people are saying, "Well, what if it doesn't work? What if it fails?" I mean, cool. Keep fucking talking. You're just going to be inspiring the people who do have the courage to push through and actually do it, because they're going to rise up to the challenge and they're going to get all the gravy and all the the ice cream on top of that cake. You know what I mean? All the people who are, oh, maybe it won't work. I don't know if it's going to work for me. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little gun shy of this. It's like, dude, you're just giving an easy road to the one percent of people who have the balls to do it, and the people who do have the balls to do it are going to eat you for fucking dinner, right? Just like in sports, people who can't push past that extra mile and do the extra training that hurts your body and is hard those people get eaten alive on game day by the guys who were fucking sweating it out at six in the morning. It's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in life. If I hear someone say, well, I don't know if it's going to work for me. Maybe I'll wait or something. It's like, okay, I can help you understand why your brain is telling you to stop. It's trying to keep you safe. But if you don't push past that, you're going to be 80 fucking years old. Look back. And like Jeff Bezos says, you're going to regret not taking that action or risk because you actually just blew your entire fucking life and you only get one of those. Absolutely. And here's something, here's an interesting point about that is I think another another uh, reason why a lot of people either don't get into um, starting a business or, or taking a risk. Let's just, let's just maybe zoom out of like starting a business, but just look into like taking a risk in life. And that could be, that could be applied in any, any area of your life. This could be sure. asking a girl or a guy out, you know, this could be yeah. uh, taking a trip somewhere. This could be going uh, skydiving or something like that, whatever. Right. And um, I personally, I believe it's because people have this shiny object syndrome thing and they look at so many different things and they try to start so many different things where the experience gets diluted and they don't get the same return on every single thing they start because they're half-assing everything because they only have so much energy to put in in, in, in every single place and instead of just kind of focusing their entire uh, energy and bandwidth on to one thing. And this is where I, I watched a, a video by... Um, by Patrick Bet David earlier today was an interview that he did, and he talked about the difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur. And he said, Yeah, he said, he said, and it's, it's kind of like, like, because when I grew up, I, I didn't know what an entrepreneur was. It was a business owner, you know? An entrepreneur, I, I even became aware of the, of the, of the word entrepreneur, maybe like a decade ago or so, right around when I started going online. And I think it's, it's kind of become a little sexier. Uh, uh, you know, in recent years, it's like everyone on Instagram has an entrepreneur in their bio, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have you ever have you ever heard of the uh, entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get a logo, get a fucking domain see. name, call it good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was guilty of that at one point too, man. Totally. I would. Who was it? Who was it? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Got to start somewhere. Got to fucking start somewhere. Absolutely, and and so when I think about that, is what I realized is when you're first starting anything again, and but let's kind of focus back into business. You do want to become a business owner. You've got a business and then you're going to own that business and you're going to operate that business and then you're going to grow that business. And then I think at a certain point, then you can become an entrepreneur where, because I think at, at its core, an entrepreneur is like the person that's got multiple things going on. And this is why people believe in the whole notion of like seven streams of income and, and passive income and all this stuff, because they are you know, labeling themselves as entrepreneurs, right? An entrepreneur, I think at its basis, it's kind of like you're doing multiple things. But in order for you to get there, I think you graduate to become an entrepreneur. I, I believe that you start as a business owner. You start with one thing. And then once you can make that one thing successful, then you can take your earnings and then diversify. And it's kind of, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's the classic uh, case of someone like Elon Musk, for example. You know, PayPal was sold for like 1.8 billion or something like that. His his uh, 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 proceedings were like 180. He put 100 in SpaceX, 70 in Tesla, 10 in Solar City, right? But he started as a business owner. He owned one business, and then he graduated as an entrepreneur. Totally. And I mean, and entrepreneurs, they like the 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 Oxford de- definition is something around willing to take on more risk, yeah. right? Than than normal than than the next guy or whatever and it's like when it looks when you look at having multiple things every time you add a layer to that shit you are taking on more risk this is why we're always like you should focus on something get it fucking going and double down triple down quadruple into that thing until you've gotten to a point where you can start diversifying and expanding right you see all these people online and it's like you can't be successful without seven streams of income. And it's like, well, how the fuck did they get the other six? Because they got the first one to like 10 mil a month and they did that for five years first. You know, that's an extreme example, but you know what I mean? PayPal, perfect example of that. Speaking of, um, of, of focus and like what you focus on, it kind of determines your success, right? So as an entrepreneur or a business owner, what are some of the things you think a new business owner, someone who is not, Someone who doesn't own a business yet, they want to get into business. What's some of the things they should focus on in the early days? Um, I think the principle of focus just itself should be applied in any business. I think that's, it, or in, in, in anything that you do when you first start, just having that principle and that core purpose of focusing on the one thing. The second thing would be, how can I how can I add as much value um, to the end user, you know, five times more than the other the the, the guy next to me mm. in the shortest time possible right uh, we oh follow, go into that a bit more talk talk more about that yeah so we both follow alex harmozy and that's like the, the the thing that he talks about all the time it's like he he talks about how and why uber beat taxi and why netflix beat blockbuster because if you think about it blockbuster what they did or netflix what they did is they gave you the same as what uh, Blockbuster does. First, at a cheaper rate, obviously, but a lot faster. You don't have to get into your car. You don't have to drive. You don't have to wait. Sometimes you go and you look at a movie, and it's like, well, holy shit, it's all sold out. You know, I, I you know, they only have like five, five uh, pieces in the store, ten pieces in the store. I have to wait for this, and it's a lot cheaper as well. It's right there, you know. And this is why they blew up. Same thing with Uber. You can literally pull up your, your phone and bam, within a couple of minutes here in Miami, literally takes like, I've never waited for more than two and a half minutes for an Uber. Oh, fast in fucking Miami, dude. Every come every time I come there for a company event or to visit you or to do some sort of business thing there in Miami, the Uber is sick there. Yeah. It's disgustingly fast. Within 30 seconds, you have like a fucking Escalade anywhere, anytime. You feel like a mob boss in fucking Miami with that exactly. shit. And that's a user experience they want. Yes. Right? Yeah. They're getting the speed. Right? They're like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, buddy's looking for a ride. Let's get him a big Escalade that's shiny as fuck and it smells good and it's got water and it gets there within like 30 seconds. Absolutely. Perfect. I'm a return guest. I'll ball over that shit. You know? 
Yeah, so if you were to translate Bessie in, into into our industry, e-commerce, Amazon, for example, like it, the reason why we always do FBA and we don't do like drop shipping or other stuff because FBA, you could literally, there are some products, you could literally order them this morning, three, four hours, five hours later, it, it, it drops the, in your doorstep. Or if you're doing drop shipping, especially if you're going to drop ship from China in today's world, it'll take a month and a half. Like the customer doesn't want to wait a month and a half where they can go buy it from the next guy. And, and get it delivered in 24 hours. And Amazon is like working on all this crazy stuff. They now want to have drones where they yeah. don't like deliver shit in like hours. Like, dude, that's stupid, <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah. do that. Try to get it cheaper, right? And in better quality, you know? What is your competitor offering? How can I offer? How can I, how can I, and people are always looking at, well, I want to profit more. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, would you rather profit 50% and sell five units or profit 25% and sell 100 units, you know? Mm. And so that's the other thing that anyone watching, if they're looking into starting, another, you know, a business should actually look into. Totally, man, 100 fucking percent. And so the other thing around focus is like, you know, if you're focusing on getting a fast result like Uber in Miami and you're just taking care of people, you're focusing on FBA, you're getting people their products within a few days. These are some big problems to solve, right? Logistics is a big problem. People need to get from A to B fast. That's not an easy problem to solve. You don't just wake up one day and like you can fucking fix that shit, right? Mm -hmm. Same with getting, how do you get a product from a warehouse, from where it's made over to you to your house within like two days? That is a massive problem that's been solved. So when, with regards to focus, small little problems will stress you out. What we're talking about stress earlier, small problems will stress you out and big problems will stress you out. So why not focus on fucking big problems, right? Yeah. And get more uh, more bang for your buck as far as the solution and what you're paid for. As far as, you know, let's scale and sell more. Here's a, here's a funny quick story about that shit. Real story. Today, driving in my car. My wife and I are out for, out for a drive. And we're here in, we're here in uh, Switzerland. And there's an Italian car behind me, right? Italian plates. And Italians, they love their hands and I'm fucking Italian. So like, I get it. I'm, and they're, they're doing this and they're doing this. And I'm looking in the rear view mirror and this guy's fucking losing his shit behind me because like, I'm not going fast enough in the intersection or whatever. And I'm like, okay, man, like I, I, I'm not worried about traffic and how fast it's moving. I'm thinking about some much bigger problems that I'm trying to solve yeah. with our company, with some family stuff. Like I'm thinking about much bigger things than, oh my God, this fucking traffic is slow. Right. And I just, I just think about like, if those little situations stress you out, you have fucking small problems. You need to go get some bigger fucking problems in your life. You know what I mean? And the focus will get you there because there's a point in time when you do have these small problems. If you're fucking stressed out and pissed off about these little fucking things, go get some bigger problems, solve some bigger problems. You'll get paid more. You'll enjoy your life more. You'll be more fulfilled. Right. Absolutely, man. I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. It's happened twice this week. It happened again last fucking week. I was driving by the lake and fucking the guy was coming towards me and he was hanging out the window telling me to hurry up because the roads are very narrow here. He's like, come on, come on. You got space. It's this big. It's this big. And I was just laughing at him. My response was to laugh. My wife and I both looked at each other, kind of laughed, and we're like, look at this guy's losing his mind right now. Like, what's he, what's he doing? And he, as he came by me, he's just like going like this and like that in the window. And I just looked at him and I smiled, you know, like pure, like, really? This is the problem you have in your day today, right? Man. And then that's the thing. If you, if you look at it, it's like what you do in one place, you do in other places. And so... If you are allowing, because you're technically, the, 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 there's a famous saying by Tony Robbins. He says, the moment in front of you is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the moment in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if you allow this kind of shit, like if you allow someone, and even if it's, even if it's like your fault completely, you're being an asshole on the road, but if you allow that to like influence your behavior and your emotions and like, completely fuck up your day. I'm pretty sure that guy's day is pretty fucked up right now. You know? Yeah, he was pissed right off. Exactly. And if you allow that to happen, then imagine like the rest of his life, the rest of his day, the rest of like everything else that he does, 
It's like, well, how are you going to build something of meaning that you are going to be passionate about, that you are going to like be passionate about showing up for and building and, and contributing to, if you allow that kind of stuff to do? And to add here, another thing that I've learned by Tony Robbins is this thing called the 90-second rule. Do you know what that is? No, tell me about the 90-second rule. So the 90-second rule is I'm still working on it. I will not allow anything to bother me for more than 90 seconds. So, for example, that guy right now, he was in a situation, he got heated, he lost it, whatever. Immediately, the thing that I do now that I'm practicing, I'm not perfect, but I'm practicing how to do is become aware, bring my awareness to the fact that I've just lost my shit. <laughs> bring bring myself together and I've got 90 seconds to get pissed, angry, cuss, yell, do whatever, but then I need to move on. Because, yeah. like, just think about it. How many times has something completely fucking silly happened and completely thrown you off your game, whether if it was losing track of your thoughts, whether if it was maybe having a bigger argument with your wife or, or a team member or whatever because of something stupid, something silly, or maybe even worse yet, Something that happened at work that, you know, that, that blood into your home life or vice versa. Because yeah. you just were not, I guess, disciplined or aware enough to say, you know what? I'm going to box this. I got mad. Whatever. Life goes on. Oh, fuck. Tell me about it, man. That's a massive life lesson. Just like that's something you'd want to tell your kids kind of thing, right? Like, you know, you get heated, snap show into a pillow for a couple seconds, let it out. And then 90 seconds later, like, get the fuck over it because, you know, time passes regardless, right? The day will continue. Things will continue happening. How are you going to respond and, like, go forward with your day, right? An analogy would be like, so you're running in a fucking marathon and you're on mile 14 and you know you have, like, 20 to go or whatever and you trip, right? And, of course, you trip, you hurt your knee a little bit and you fucking lose some time. You get up and what do you do? You're going to fucking sit there, cry and bitch about your knee and fucking, you know, walk around and complain to the guy on the side of the street and, you know, bitch and moan about it. Or are you going to fucking just keep running and get over it? You could do either way, right? But the only way you're actually going to get to your goal is if you just keep fucking running. So if shit hits the fan, you have to acknowledge it, get the lesson quickly. My lesson today was like, when Italian guys are behind you, maybe hit the gas a bit more. I got it. (laughs) I'm fucking, I got it. Cool. I understood, bro. I'm fucking, I'll go a bit quicker for you. Um, but yeah, get the lesson and just keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. That and learn the hand signals so that you can give it back to him. <laughs> I went like this when he drove by me. I smiled and I was like, dude, you're just chirping. Shut the fuck up, man. Go get a better problem to think about. <laughs> you know, I remember, uh, and the reason why this really sits with me, I remember probably, when was it, like 10, 11 years ago when we first had our first business in America, our pizza shop. We used to have an employee, and my brother was, um, my brother was, uh, he's a character, you know, and, um, and he, um, so I remember one day something happened. One of her employees was not, to, was not supposed to do something, and he did it, and my brother yelled at him, and it's like, he shouldn't fucking be doing this, and then, you know, we went on, we got busy, we, we went on, I went on some deliveries, it was pizza, you know, we went on some deliveries, whatever. Came back was, I'm talking about like two, three hours later. I hear my brother and the employee arguing. And I'm like, what the fuck? I thought we're over this. And and they came from like, what's happening right now? It's like to me, dude, your brother won't fucking talk to me. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like three hours ago, I did this thing I wasn't supposed to. I got it. He told me. I said, okay, got it. It's like this whole fucking day, he's still like pissed off about the thing that happened three hours ago. And then he's like, I ask him questions, like, I need help with something. I ask him questions, he ignores me. And he's like, dude, how the fuck am I supposed to, like, operate? Like, we're busy, we have a line, and you're not helping me. You're not helping your fucking business. Yeah, you know? passive aggressive, too. Right, and then, it like, it really sat with me, and I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm pretty sure I've done so many things that allowed, so many things that happened yesterday, day before, two hours ago, like, just holding those grudges and not getting over them. To like lead into other things and just imagine what those, you know, would have led to had I not, you know, kind of like brought myself to it. This is why now I have that that nine second rule. It's like 
It happens. I'm aware of it. I get pissed. I get whatever the fuck it is. And then I just like start smiling for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> like it gets yeah. me over it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's good, man. I love to hear that. That's really healthy for sure. And also we talked about earlier thinking in the future, past, present time. So if you're, you're snapping for a few minutes or, or, or even like something happens, th- th- this could go both way, right? Like sit at home, listen to this. It's not just bad, negative emotion. Also positive emotion can flood you with endorphins and serotonin to the point where like you have a fucking rainbow colored glasses on about life. When in reality, that's not really what's going on here. Yes. Right. So you gotta be careful with that too. What if something fucking amazing happens and you're just like, holy shit, best thing ever, right? I just sold a million products on my fucking shifts on front page or, you know, I just you know, I had a child or I just got married or it's like, boom, you're having this fucking endorphin dump, you know? And then you allow that to sort of take you off your game where you got to go in like monk mode, discipline mode and keep doing your shit that got you there. Yes. Right. It's like, yeah, the business just did X million a month. Fuck. Yeah. And you just, you know, party for three months straight after. Well, good fucking luck hitting that number again. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. So it goes both ways. It's, it's about, it's about self-control discipline and bringing it back to the moment and just being like, okay, cool. You know, I'm neutral here. It's like shit's super bad. Shit's super good. It's never as good or as bad as you think it is. Remain neutral as possible so that you can like logically come up with good decision-making. Don't let your emotions overtake your decision-making ca- capability and then make sound decisions that will move the needle on whatever it is you're trying to solve. Ideally a bigger problem than fucking traffic champs. Right. Yeah. I, um, I, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely, um, I've been definitely victim, uh, to that, you know, mm. um, living in the, um, living in the, in the wonderland for too long and then thinking that it's always going to be like this. And, uh, again, going back to Tony Robbins, he, um, he has a famous saying, he says, good times, bad times won't last forever. Pandemics, wars, <sighs> you know, but good times also won't last forever. No. Um, and this is where, as you said, you always need to kind of be on the up and up and like figuring out the next thing. Um, and, and, uh, and like, you know, I, I personally am, um, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I fell into that last year because I, you know, BJK university had taken off and it was doing very well. And I thought, well, okay, well there's only up from there. And then we went through this, this downfall, this valley and uh, and for a long time, I was like, oh, it's just you know this month, that month, this it's gonna pick back up. And uh, it took a, a really gut check to to realize like there are some serious fucking problems here. We need to figure out and really like look into this very closely. And so it's very important to like uh, as you said, be like have um have your ear to the ground, be grounded, and be um uh like have a get a, a reality check every now and then, and kind of. Like, see exactly where you are and see where your surroundings are and then, you know, not live in this, like, wonderland all the time and, and, and realize that things could really go go south pretty fucking quickly without you realizing it, you know? Totally. And they can go straight up just as fast. Yes. You know? Life is cyclical. Like, as you were saying that, I just reached over. A book I'm reading right now. Mm. Um, Ray Dalio. Right? Yeah, Dalio. And, like, I, I've, I've read this book... Um, I mean, I've skimmed it a couple times, but I'm like, I'm studying it more than anything now. And like, if nothing else, this just proves that shit is cyclical. Look at the fucking cover up and down, up and down, up and down. And this book is all about why nations succeed and fail. So it's talking about the economy and it's helping you understand like where to invest and how to do things in certain economies. And it's just saying like, this is how a nation becomes a fucking empire. And then these are the things that happen. Then it dips and drops. And then the uh, the next empire comes, right? Like right now, the States is on a down trend and China's on an uptrend. Believe it or not, it's fucking true. It's just obvious. So it's like, you can see it happening. But then if you just have people around you, for example, that are just like, yes, Ben, or you have, you know, uh, fake news, whatever you want to call it, that's just saying the shit that you want to hear all the time, or you're getting misleading data, you could believe that you're still on the uptrend and you're fucking not. Or you could be in a downtrend on your way back up and you could be having people around you that are super negative and pessimistic and shit. And all of a sudden, like, they actually drag you down when you were on a fucking ups- upswing, right? So, like, the whole thing is to be super fucking hyper aware 
and remaining neutral yourself and ideally having your direct people around you, your very small circle of friends and business partners in the same boat where we're like, hey, we're neutral here. We're looking at the data for what it really is and we're going to make some good decisions. And, and this can happen in a big business, a small business, fucking Elon Musk's business, your business at home with like just you by yourself, all of the above. It's the same principles. It's just different scales, you know? Yeah, I love that. And, and I think that's the thing that, um, that oftentimes people, um, people fall into the notion of like, I've made it or once I get here, then, you know, this doesn't matter anymore or whatever. But like from someone that, you know, went from not making any money to making, you know, multiple seven figures and net profits into the bank every single year for the last few years. It literally takes, it doesn't take a whole lot for you to lose everything that you have. And it doesn't take a whole lot for you to like completely fall off a cliff. And you always have to be on your A game. I would truly believe that there is no destination. I truly believe in that. And what I truly also believe is that it's not even about the destination. Like, I know what this whole cliche saying is, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. You hear that all the time. But I'm here to tell you, you know, having launched nine businesses and, and made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, all that stuff, it really isn't about the destination. Because when you think you've made it and you have the things that you feel like, holy shit, five years ago I would have thought, no fucking way I would have these things. It's cool for like an hour, a week, a month. <laughs> But, like, right now, I probably work as hard as I did and as long as I did in my, like, restaurant. I mean, I might have worked a little longer hours there. Well, restaurants are fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I'll shut you on, like, two days without sleep, but... Yeah, totally. But, like, I'm working now more than ever, and I have more money than I've ever had in my life, right? Yeah. Now, first, I enjoy it. You know, second, because also the goal and the vision are so much far in the future. And that's the other thing that I believe a lot of people fail to do is they will set a goal and then they will achieve it. And I think that's the mistake. You never want to fucking achieve your goals. What you yeah. want to do is you want to set a goal. When you're two thirds of the way there, you want to set a bigger goal. You want to celebrate your goals. You want to make sure that you recognize them. And you create that trust with yourself that, hey, we celebrate. Yes, this was a big deal five years ago. And yes, it's a big deal. And yes, we've accomplished this. And celebrate. But as you said, don't live in there for six months. Don't go partying for six months. Set the next goal. Tony Robbins wanted to feed, I don't know, what did he say? He wanted to feed, like, seven years ago, he set a goal yeah. to feed a billion people in 10 years. He accomplished that in, I Sorry. think, in, in eight years or seven years or something like that. And then literally... Uh, right before he he accomplished his goal, what he did was he set another goal to feed a hundred billion, you know, to 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 to, to put out a hundred billion meals. Right before he got to his goal, a hundred billion fucking meals. Yeah, that's insane. Fuck. Right, it is insanity. Yeah. Long term vision, man. Yep. Long term fucking vision, right? And so, yeah, you you know, Tony is a great example of it because um, he. He fucking has it all, right? But working his ass off because he has a big vision and it's bigger than him. Mm -hmm. It's also a big piece of it, right? Yeah. Contribution, legacy, all that stuff is massive. But it's like, okay, the guy sitting at home is being like, yeah, cool. So you got tons of cash and you're working hard. I get it. We hear this all the time, right? But the question is like, what the fuck is the difference between Joe Schmo sit on his couch, fucking eating vanilla ice cream, wishing that he could sit in a chair and say, I make multiple seven a year and I'm working harder than ever on my passion. Cause that's like pinnacle life. I don't know if you realize it or not, but I'm here to tell you that's pinnacle life, bro. People are looking for financial freedom and time freedom. You're at multiple sevens a, a year and in a passion that you love and you have a legacy behind it. Right? So it's like, how does the guy go from the couch to there? I think of things like, you know, tenacity, determination, monk mode, fucking 
bury your head and don't say shit to anybody for a few fucking years because you just can't. You can't lose focus or have anyone tell you, no, you can't do it. It's not a good idea. You just have to fucking go for what you believe and just put your head down. Like, what, what does that guy need to do who's sitting there who wants to be sitting where you're sitting maybe five, six years from now or even like just financially free or time free a year from now, you know? It's a big step at the beginning. It definitely is a big step. And and first of all, the goal is to never not work. The goal is to not have to work, but work on shit that you love. Mm-hmm. And so once you understand that or once you make that, I think it's um it's all about graduating into the next identity. So... My identity in the, ba- in, the, in the beginning and my why, the strongest why that I had was I want to clear my debt, which at the time was like 150K uh, 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 that I had out of my restaurant business. I want to retire my parents and I want to gain the, the, the respect of my dad back. So those were three things that, that like fueled my fire. And it was like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make it happen. Once I got close to like making that happen, then it was like, all right, so now I have this. Now I can... Like, I can look into what is the thing that's going to keep me excited, that's going to keep me motivated, that's going to keep me, like, looking into the future. And that was where I needed to come up with something that I'm passionate about. So before that, you just have to, like, we've talked about it in this uh, in this show before. Number one, come out with an outcome. What is the outcome that you want to accomplish and, 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 and attach a, a, a timeline to it? So the outcome maybe is, you know, you could do simple math. Let's just think of finances here. We're going to make $100,000 in a year. Okay, maybe you're making 30, 40 grand right now. 50 grand, you want to make 100,000. Okay, so I want to make $100,000 a year. And right now we're in March of 2023. And let's just give it a, you know, whatever, 18-month period, right? So in 2024, I want to make $100,000 instead of 50,000. Now, I know that doesn't sound a whole lot to a lot of people, but you've just literally doubled how much you would be making this year. That's a hundred percent fucking growth. That's not normal. Amazon, Apple, all these companies, they would be lucky if they grow like 10, 15, 20, 30 percent year over year. So the fact that you would grow a hundred percent next year, that's fucking incredible. So you've just added you created an outcome and then you've added a, a timeline to it, right? Hundred grand timeline. And then you want to attach a why to it. What is the why? Like why the fuck do I want to make a hundred thousand dollars? Like, just think of what you're doing right now. You're probably working 40, 50, 60 hours. If you think of doubling that, that means I have to work 120 hours a week. Do you necessarily do that? Yes, no, depends on what you're doing. But it's definitely going to take a lot more work than what you're doing right now. And for you to work almost double as hard as you are right now, there's going to be a strong fucking why. Because that means no weekends. That means no vacations. That means no going out. That means no video games. The guys out there that love video games, that means no partying anymore. That means no girls night out, no boys night out. That means nothing. <laughs> that means you fucking shove your face and you fucking work every work every waking hours. And I think that's the thing that's missing from the internet. Because we go on Instagram and you see the fucking glory. And people are like, work 30 minutes a day and become a fucking millionaire by the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, for you sure, right? You know Fuck off. Bullshit. Such bullshit. Dude, I can tell you from my experience, when I went online, you talk about doubling in a year, not to fucking toot my own horn, but I will toot it. I 55X'd my income the first year I came to BJKU. 55X. 50 fucking five. It's ridiculous, okay? And so I was like, holy shit. How the fuck did I get the hair though? Monk mode. I, mean, I turned off. I saw seven days a week, 365. Yeah. I didn't stop. I was fucking doing it every fucking day. Christmas, birthdays, my anniversary. I was talking to Jason. Jason, you're fucking watching this right now for sure. One of the editor guys. I talked to him when he joined BJKU on my fucking wedding anniversary because he hit me up the other day and he was like, hey, bro, it's my two-year anniversary with a company on the 29th. Do you want to like hop on Zoom? We can catch up and like kind of reminisce. You can, I kind of mentor him a little bit. I was like, dude, I'd love to, but on the 29th, it's our anniversary and we're probably going to go for dinner and stuff. How about the 28th or the 30th? And I didn't even think of it. And he's like, wait a minute. I enrolled on your anniversary. You were fucking working on your anniversary. And I was like, fuck yeah, I was working on my anniversary. Are you kidding me? I was working all day, dude. But that's what it takes. And that's what people miss. And that's what the internet is fucking bullshitting people with. That's why when people come to BJKU, like we're always saying, listen, it's not going to be easy 
it's easy, but it's simple, but it's not easy. Is that the saying? Or it's easy, but not simple. Whatever it's the fucking word is. Not easy, yeah. yeah. I mean, the steps are there. The coaching is there. It's all there, but you got to fucking work hard. The shit does not just fall from the sky because you turn a goddamn computer on. That's right. You know what I mean? Big time. That shit pisses me off when I see it because I bought into that bullshit at the beginning. That's why I got, I got scammed. I was in these crypto scams and all this shit because I was working offline and I would just see people being like, yeah, dude, I fucking got rich super fast. And I'm like, holy fuck, really? How? Let me try some of that shit. Bullshit. And I think also part of that is there are some people that did well super fast, but it wasn't, yeah. the, it wasn't a repeated, a repeatable thing. All liars. Right. And, and so, because that is very possible. Um, and this is why, like, I always, I think uh, in the last episode or the episode before, we were talking about, like, taking advice vertically, not horizontally. You want someone that's so far ahead in the future that's been able to do a duplicated obscene, you know, many times before you go and, like, start listening to them. Because anyone can, can like, if you try a hundred things, one of them is probably going to work. And one of them is probably going to work very fast. The, the 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 mastery is can you repeat that over and over and still get the same results on a consistent basis? And that's the thing that a lot of people miss out on there is, you know, some fucking eighteen year old kid will do something, will you know, do some product, drop ship it or whatever, will make fucking ten thousand dollars in a month, and then now this kid is teaching a course on how to make ten thousand dollars a month drop shipping. And then out of a thousand people, one person will probably be, be able to do the same thing. And I know they're going to use that person in all of their fucking testimonials. And now we've got 10,000 other people thinking all the shit. This is easy. Why is it not working for me type of thing, you know? Totally. So, then they beat themselves up because of false expectations too. Absolutely. Which is fucking evil shit. You know, the expectation is to, has to be business is hard. It can be easier if you have coaches, mentors, and people who've done it before. You can learn from their fucking mistakes. If business was fucking easy, everybody would be a business owner. Everybody would understand how to do their taxes as a business owner. They'd all be running the loopholes of fucking business owners. They'd be doing all that shit. But most people are employees because the easy way to do life is to be told what to do, show up, do the bare minimum, skate through, and just sort of live your life that way. If it was easy to come over and completely go monk mode on your shit, own your decisions, and have a neutral... Uh, emotional response as you're navigating the waters to climb the mountain of fucking entrepreneurship where like 99% of people fail on the way up by yourself clawing and then getting help from people. If you have the courage to do that, you're going to be in this realm of humans where most people aren't. That's why I say if you have the balls to do it and you have the courage to push forward past your fear, which we all have, if you push past that, you will put yourself in a position where most people aren't. And from there, you have an advantage and leverage. And you can do whatever the fuck you want, but you got to get there first. And that's just making the first decision, starting small. Absolutely, man. And I think this is also another thing that people miss out on. Um, and I speak from experience because when I was thinking about my restaurant and relaunching, I, I, I bought a... Um, I bought a dive bar, a biker's dive bar. Uh, we used to have- <laughs> Tell me more. Tell me more about the biker dive bar. Jeez, what the Dude, fuck is that all about? We used to have Hells Angels come through our, our restaurant. And wow. so imagine this 130 pound, you know, little Middle Eastern guy hanging out in a fucking, in a, uh, 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 you know, in a restaurant with these like big old, you know, biker's dudes with like big ass beards, fucking, you know- Dead on the shit. I mean- like, I, I would be walking around like, dude, one of these guys can literally, like, like slap me and I'll fucking probably die. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I go in there, and my first thing that I want to do is, obviously, remodel the place. But my first thing is, we had a kitchen that was, I don't know, maybe, like, 10 feet by 5 feet. So it was probably about 50, definitely less than 100 square feet, right? Tiny-ass fucking kitchen. And I want to push anything and everything out of that fucking kitchen. <laughs> I wanted to do sushi. I want to do barbecue. I want to do American. I want to do Mediterranean. I wanted to do Asian. I the fucking same time? Do it all, bro. Jeez. I wanted to do it all. We had a many. Have you have you heard of Cheesecake Factory? Have you have you been to Cheesecake Factory? Yeah, yeah. I love Cheesecake Factory. Fuck yeah. Have you seen their fucking menu? Yes. 
Dude, it's like a, it's like the Bible. It's literally got like 35 <laughs> fucking pages, right? Yeah. And so yeah. literally that was our menu. Jesus. And up to- well, there's, a, the, I, there's something that I know true from the restaurant in- industry myself, and this is something I stand by, and I think you're validating the point right now, because that fucking failed, right? Before oh, I go any further. Miserable. It blew up, right? So I have almost a rule. Like the bigger the menu, the more diverse it is, the shittier it's going to be, man. Yeah. My wife and I went to a place just like a couple of weeks ago. We went to a place and it said um, dim sum house. And we were like, oh, fuck yeah. I would love dim sum, some Chinese food. Let's go in there. <laughs> I open up the menu and it's like pizza, pasta, steak, dim sum, sushi. And then you flip the page and it went into like Hummus Greek. Hummus waffle. <laughs> Hummus. It totally Greek, this. And then it had shawarma. It had a shawarma Jesus thing, Christ. and I was like, get the fuck out of here. What is going on right now? And I just was like, okay, well, they can't, like, we're in Italy. They can't fuck up the pizza. We'll take two pizzas. <laughs> you know? Focus, man. No focus. So what happened with you? You got everything in this little fucking restaurant with no kitchen almost, right? Oh, did it just blow up? I mean, it just blew up. We, we did the bike just slap you around? Yeah, we couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't <laughs> get a fucking uh, a burger out of the kitchen in less than fucking 30 minutes. Right, Jesus. The construction yeah. workers down the street have an hour break. It takes them ten minutes to go, you know, to get to their place and get back to work. They come mm-hmm. in, they want to have a fucking quick sandwich and go back to work. It takes thirty minutes for them to fucking to get the food. By the time we get their order, stuff like that, people would come in once and never come back again. Right? Fuck. And so- dude, imagine if imagine. Sorry, but imagine if you just had uh, in and out style. Imagine that oh, fucking burger smashing. done three fucking times. And here's here's a quick story about In and Out. Actually, now that you're talking about In and Out, and I love, love this analogy because I was looking at doing a comparison one time, and I don't know if you saw it, but one time I was trying to deliver like a focus thing to our team, and I did the analysis between Red Bull and Monster, and then the analysis between In and Out and McDonald's. I don't remember the 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 Red Bull numbers, but the McDonald's numbers I remember. The average in and out store does $5.4 million. The average McDonald's store does $2.7 million. In and out does double with like what? Literally three double. fucking one, one, one burger done three ways, yeah. fries, and a fucking shake. That's it. McDonald's has breakfast, lunch, coffee, dessert. They fucking have, you know, ice cream. They have everything, bro. Dude, I know. I hear you, man. Uh, and speaking of In-N-Out, remember the first time? I mean, I went to In-N-Out for my very first time with you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Fucking, so we're, we're in California, a mastermind. <laughs> yeah, we're in L.A. And it's like, I'm like, okay, number one, we're in L.A. And I need to get something to puff on as we're walking around in L.A. <laughs> and so I'm like a little fucking stone. And it's like, dude, what's this In-N-Out I hear about? Yeah. It's like, it's right there. And I'm like, oh, man, like we, we have to do this. So we go to fucking In-N-Out. And I was like, holy shit, the menu's so simple. I was a little out of it. So I was like, it was so easy to understand. Yeah. I was like, oh, a double burger, the fries, and the shake. Yes. It's like, you can't fuck that up. And so the construction worker who comes from work, he's thinking about other shit, right? He's got his family. He's stressed out from the work, from the job. He's only got a certain amount of time. He doesn't cognitively want to like fucking go through a menu and think. That's something else that also fucking drives me nuts. I don't want to have to think if I don't need to. Like, I get pissed off when I walk in a room and I can't find the light switch. It bothers me. Yeah. I feel like I'm burning energy that I shouldn't be burning. So, like, when I go look at menus, yeah, you are, literally. And I look at menus and I'm like, first of all, where the fuck are the pictures on this menu? Oh, dude, this is a, this is a complaint that I've always had with fucking restaurants. And now yeah. that you, everything is, like, with the barcode, it's like, okay, so you've got a website... Why not add pictures again? I'm a visual Everywhere. person. I love to How about fucking a video? see pictures. How about a fucking video? Oh, dude. dude, like, this is funny because we both come from the restaurant injury, so we're going to fucking talk about this shit forever. But it's like, imagine a QR code. They open it up, and inside the, the phone, it pops open, and it's like, you know, our specialties of the house. There's three things, and it's a fucking HD video of, like, the chef in slow motion, like, squishing the burger, and it's sizzling. And then it's like slapped onto a patty and it's being brought to your table and it's like put down in front of you and it's like a, a 10 second slow-mo video. And like that, that's the menu. If you want, you know? here's a fucking business for you. There we go. Go around to your local restaurants, 
and literally have like you could literally start a business with this, like a digital agency, you know? Yeah. Go around to local restaurants and and simply show them how they can probably I don't know, I mean probably twenty, thirty percent add to their top line by literally just making their fucking menus simpler and more visual. Cause I personally so you're talking to someone that loves to fucking eat out. And I mean I love to go to like high quality restaurants. And even to places where they're charging two, three, four hundred dollars for a fucking for a twelve ounce steak, they still yeah. don't have that shit. It's like drives me fucking how, crazy. Could I see how this shit fucking looks? And they sit there yeah. and like tell me all these fucking complicated words, and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is that? What is he just confused the shit out of me? It's like, give me a picture. Here's what I want. So if you're watching, that's a fucking business for you. There it's a fucking great business. Here's a good example of a steakhouse. So my wife and I, we went and met a bunch of the BJKU team in Budapest. Right, we flew out there. We had a few days with the team. We went out to a steakhouse one night. I was like, "Okay, everybody, we're fucking going for a steak." And we get to the restaurant, and it's a high-end place, and it's nice. And we all sit down, and like about half of the team isn't really steak, you know, connoisseurs. How we are, you know, like we like to think of ourselves as steak connoisseurs. We love our steaks, right? Shout out to our, well, at least to my dad. He brought me up on steaks. You got your steak uh, taste from somewhere, but we love fucking steaks. If you're ever out with Bashar and I, steaks, let's go. So anyways, we're in Budapest having steaks and like, you know, they're like, oh, well, what kind of cut should we get? Or like, what's this mean? What's that mean? And the menu is just all written or whatever. And then you flipped open this one glossy page in the middle of this menu and they had pictures. They had a picture of each cut and then they had a fork with all the rare, medium, well, well done, blue. And it's like lined up and you can see it. And they just fucking, it tells you, this is what blue looks like. This is what rare looks like. This is what well done, you know? And he just showed you. And then the, 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 the waiter shows up and he's like, okay, what's everybody want? And they just pointed at it. They were like, that steak, that cooked. And he's like, got it. And then when he brings it out, you know what they had on it? They had a little flag because it was uh, steaks from all over the world. It's like an Argent, uh, steak from Argentina, a steak from Canada, a steak from New Zealand, Australia, whatever, right? And it was like a little flag on it and then a little picture of the medium well or whatever color on the back of the flag. Awesome. So it, like, it brought it full circle for you so you knew what you were getting, right? Mm. And they had the same for the sauces. And I was like, dude, thank you. Fucking right. Focused simple and easy for the buyer to make a decision there we go. and at the end of the day that's exactly what the as a consumer that what that's what we're looking for so for you sitting at home if you're looking to start a business if you're looking to get into entrepreneurship or whatever how can i make it as simple as possible how can i make it as how can i focus because the more you focus the more vertically you go into one thing the more mastery you're going to have the more you're going to perfect the end product to deliver to the end user and then number three how can i deliver it at a speed half of what my competitor is delivering it at or even lower than that right so little if you focus on those three you'll have an incredible business and you'll be able to crush anything you do yeah it's totally true man it's totally true <laughs> fuck well let me let me let me ask you this so entrepreneurship the okay. word entrepreneur, mm. it's sexy. Very. Every every guy, on. every guy in Miami has it in their fucking bio, right? Yeah. Uh, every Lambo guru out there has it in their fucking bio, right? And what do you think? What what do you hear the word entrepreneur? And then when you heard the the hear the word intrapreneur. Oh. What do you think of What's, that? What What does entrepreneur mean to you first? So we're on the same page. So, okay, let's look at a company like BJK University. Okay. Everyone inside of BJK University, I consider them as an intrapreneur. Mm. And here's the reason why. You cannot be an entrepreneur at, any, at every company. So you can't say, well, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm going to work somewhere else, and I'm going to be an entrepreneur there. Because... Like 99.9% of companies out there or businesses, they don't want fucking entrepreneurial spirited people. They want yeah. a fucking employee that's going to shut the yeah. fuck up and that's <clears throat> going to follow orders and that's going to do their fucking thing. And this yeah. is probably like 80% of people watching that potentially end up joining BJK University or wanting to start their own thing 
because they are in a business that does not appreciate them, that doesn't give a fuck about them. They've probably given them 10 years of their lives after going to school for four years and spending tens of thousands, you know, then they're realizing like, fuck, almost two decades later, I'm here? Fuck yeah. that, I'm out, I need to do my own thing. And so I think that's the problem. The system is rigged and we've talked about this and we can talk about this for fucking days. Yeah. But I think the problem is this whole entrepreneurial stuff. 33 million businesses in America alone. 25 million, I'm sorry, 33 million small businesses in America alone. Small business definition is 500 employees or less. 99.9% of the 33 million do not fucking have any more like than two, three, five people. Yeah. 25 million of the 33 has one fucking people, one person, and they break even at best, most lose money. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get at here is not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur to escape the matrix or to uh -huh. get out of the nine to five grind or just to find something in life that's worth having. And I feel like because of the past trauma, the first thing they want to go into is entrepreneurship. Mm. And I feel like gotcha. we need a lot more entrepreneurs, people with an entrepreneurial spirit that go and tag into a business that's already created and help fucking explode it. 100%, dude. Well, I mean, that's that's for sure. The entrepreneur thing is the sexy word out there. And it, it does take the crazy ones who want to start and run the business from the front as the spear, as the CEO. But there's also an extreme need <laughs> and thirst for the person who comes along and wants to join that mission. And that could be me joining you in BJKU. Yes. That could be a student learning how to join Amazon's network. 100%. It's the same thing. It's identical. I was going to say, absolutely. Yeah. And so the, the, the notion of like, you have to go out and do your own thing and like, you, you don't have any balls unless you're an entrepreneur by yourself, like get out there and grind on your own and own your life and fucking escape the matrix and shit like this. It's all cool for sound bites, but in reality, if you're fucking smart, you'll fucking jump onto something that's proven to be working with smart people around you. And you can get in there and add a shit ton of value and be part of something that's bigger than you. And you can be part of something that has other winners in and around it. And together you go farther. Right. You say this all the time on our company meetings, yes. right? Alone, we can go fast together. We can go far. And it's fucking true. If you want to go far in life, you need to get a small group of people around you who you can partner with, stand beside, get mentored by, coach them, all of the above. And this is what I'd say an entrepreneur is right. And there needs to be more of an emphasis on this because it's, it's, it's serving the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur. Mm. We need each other, right? We need each other. The Amazon seller needs fucking Amazon, yes. right? I'm not BJK. I'm AJC, right? I need the BJK. What does BJK need? Well, he needs fucking AJC, right? Without the two people, you don't have the nucleus. It's like a family nucleus or a fucking, if you want to look in molecules, you have the things spinning around. Yep. There's not just one thing floating by itself doing what it does. Like you can fucking blow this shit out to the universe if you want to get super wild and talk hermetics. It's like you can go massive and you can go tiny and all of it is multiple little things spinning and working together to form this fucking reality we live in. And business is no different, dude. No different at all. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, again, I like, I think I want to, I want to kind of, um, what's the word? I want to like uh, add to my mission to make mm. entrepreneurial, you know, entrepreneurship sexy again, you know? Yeah, totally. It's uh, like, man, we can make red hats like Trump and wear them around and fucking, we can, we can disrupt the entrepreneur uh, space by being pro entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Be, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, ma making entrepreneurs uh, uh, great again, right? Yeah, um, yeah, totally. <laughs> I think not a lot of people talk about it. And, and I think um, because something that, Again, it goes back to the reason for a lot of people having trauma from working for someone else, working for the man, you know? Yeah. That's the notion of working for the man, you know? 
And it's like, well, I want to have my own thing. Well, you want to have your own thing, but what experience do you have? Um, you know what I mean? And do you want it really? Do you really That's want it? That's another fucking good question. Do you want it? Do you want to have the stress and the weight at the top? You know what do I'm saying? You? Like, yeah. right now when I look at BJK University, um, our team, if BJK University makes a billion dollars a year or if it makes a hundred thousand dollars a year our team will get paid until it gets to the point where there's just no fucking money right yeah i as a person only make money when the company makes money yeah right and so and then on the on the other side as well if there was something if there was a lawsuit if something were to fucking happen or whatever and although john did something in marketing or said something they shouldn't say the only person that gets sued or that would go to jail or something would happen to is Bashar. John wouldn't get anything, right? Yeah. And so the thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're like, I want to start my own business, I want to do this, I want to start that, is like, yes, you could potentially get all the upside, but it's like 100% of nothing, it's still fucking nothing, right? Yeah. And then I look at starting an Amazon business, for example... Not as entrepreneurial, but as intrapreneurial for me personally, Mm -hmm. because you're plugging into something that already works. You're plugging into an ecosystem. It's like the same thing like Jason working with BJK University. You know, Mm -hmm. he's not starting his own like web design business where he consults other clients or whatever. He's plugging in his skills into BJK University and his like he has the opportunity to contribute, to influence and to grow. Because we yeah. are an entrepreneurial type of business. We allow people to become creative. We allow people to become innovative. Hell, one of our fucking core, core values is innovation. You know? Yeah, totally. And, so, and you can you can build, you can build, sorry, you can build like group, like a team around you. Right? So it's like you're the, in, you're, you're, you're entrepreneurial in the sense where you, you, you do leadership and you take on the risk of your pod and your team and you're owning that shit. So you have the entrepreneurial spirit in you, but you're an entrepreneurial person in the grand scheme of business. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I would argue that we are entrepreneurial in a sense because we're tied up with Amazon so tightly. Right? Yeah. Like as a company, if you want to look super macro and like blow it way out, you could also go that far. You could even go as far as to say Jeff Bezos is hooked on to whatever the fuck the internet is. E- or, or e-commerce, let's say it, or commerce of some sort, right? Yeah. Like buying and trade, buying and selling, right? Like it, 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 it exponentially opens up. And so you want to find your place in there and you want to own it. And so I'm with you, man. Let's make entrepreneurial sexy again. Let's buy some fucking hats. We'll get in Ubers in Miami. We'll drive around. We'll take them to steakhouses. We'll just make some noise. And before we know it, all the fuck boys with uh, rented Lambos, they're going to have entrepreneur Instagram handles on their, on their wrapped Lambos that they're renting. And they'll be driving that shit around marketing for us, man. We're on to something. You can join us if you want. We're going to make this new business right now after this episode, it's ready to go. <laughs> well, I get the domain. Maybe, maybe that, that, uh, that might be the, you know, something around that might be the name of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Make an entrepreneurial sexy again. There you go. I like it. There you go. That sounds fucking good to me, man. I'd watch that shit. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude it's good yeah it's funny it, it, it's just it's a funny landscape out there you know like it is. it's funny there's so much there's so much noise and um you know what's what's interesting to me is like i've i've personally and i know you as well like i've been in monk mode heavy now for about three three years almost four years now basically since we started working together like i haven't been on social media I don't have any, like, I just, I'm just so deep buried in my work. I love it. It's fun. It makes great money. Like, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to do this and fuck everything. Right. But now that we have the podcast, right? Like I'm kind of a little bit more on social media again, right? Like we have the Instagram reels and stuff happening. So I like, I downloaded Instagram, put it on my phone to like, look at the reels and like, see how it's going and stuff like this. And so I, I catch myself like going into these fucking like, social media spaces again that I haven't looked at for so long. And I'm just like, some of it is fucking gross, dude. Some is great. There's a ton of awesome motivation and stuff on there, 
but I feel like there's so many people that are just sugarcoating the reality and making it seem like something it's not and just giving a highlight reel versus saying, listen, this is how it's actually going to go. And here's a real proven method to get there. Right? Because that's what we pride ourselves on. It's like, here's a proven method to go there. Let's go do the work together. We'll be over here off social media. Our fucking platform is school. We're not even in Facebook and shit. And that's intentional, right? So I see all this noise and I'm seeing it more now than before. And it's making me like, it's making me like not like the space, if that makes sense. I'm like, oh, you fucking lying bullshitter right now. Shut the fuck up. And then the next guy, I'm like, oh, you bullshitter. You're lying right now. You know, like when you're in the game and you see what's going on, you can tell some people are just full of it. And some people are honestly telling you what it's really going to be like. And that's one thing that I'm very proud of with us, right? Like we tell people we'll straight up how it's going to go and what they need to do. And we have high expectations and we all hold them accountable and our community supports them. I, I, I just feel that there needs to be more of that. And I, I haven't even been aware of it until recently, you know? Well, I think what, um, it depends, um, it depends on what you're optimizing for, right? So a lot of these smug boys that you're talking about are optimizing for likes and comments and shares, and I want to make money today and stuff like that. What we're optimizing for is a true impact 10 years from now, 50 years from now, right? And so when you're like, th this is where it comes down to like this short term versus long term vision. And kind of like that, that instant gratification. I always, you know, tell the story of like uh, drinking a Coke, a can of Coke. You drink it right now, it fucking feels great. You feel awesome. It tastes good, you know. But if you were to think what that can of Coke is doing for you in a month, six months, 12 months, you wouldn't touch it. Because you know that can of Coke over time, it's going to negatively impact your health. But right now it feels great. So a lot of people do it right now because it feels great right now. They're not disciplined enough to look at the long term. You know, it's like doing things at the cost of like I used to always do this for myself to myself many years ago. I would always be sabotaging future Bashar. I would be doing things today at the cost of future Bashar. And that's where a lot of people need to get in the habit of like, I need to think a little longer term. Yes, I need to get something done today. But I also need to think, what is the consequence going to happen in a year from now? Where is that going to leave me? You know what I mean? Totally, dude. There's there's something that I um I adopted maybe a year ago that really serves me well in this in this realm because I think we all suffer with that, right? Instant gratification, serotonin, like it's in our fucking biology to like want to go for it now. That's why they fucking sell us sugar bullshit and it's so easy to sell candy and stuff, right? There's this thing that I always tell myself, like your future, the future version of you is cheering you on. I have it written on my morning uh, thing that I write on my lenses. It says the future version of you is cheering you on. Today's the best day of your life. So this phrase, it gets me in the moment. It reminds me today's the only day we have, but then it also gives me the reference of like, oh yeah, there's a version of me in the future. Like there's an older version of Aaron and like, he's fucking looking back at you right now being like, do the shit you need to do, man, because like I'm over here and I'm rooting for you, but you got to do the work. And I even have a picture of old me. I made it on an app. It means old. I got a beard. You've seen it, right? I got a beard. I'm old as fuck. I live like 120 years old. It's ridiculous. And I have this picture and I slapped it on that book. I fucking look at it every day. And I'm like, that guy, I need to make him proud. He's the person I'm trying to impress. And that has got me out of this immediate gratification loop of like partying and drinking and like self-sabotaging and not doing the shit you need to do and delayed gratification and all that. That has helped me a ton. So for anyone listening, if that's something that you struggle with, get an old picture of yourself and remind yourself that one day that's going to be fucking you. And today's the only day you have.